I need a 300 volt power supply for my RIAA tube amplifier, but to use a transformer like this just seems kind of big, so I'm going to try something else. I wanted to come up with a switcher for the phono preamp that would take 12 volts DC and step it up to 300 volts DC for the plate supply of the phono preamp. I was looking for existing transformers so I wouldn't have to wind one custom and it appeared this flyback transformers from Coilcraft would make a nice high voltage step up. These are actually designed for pulse capacitor charge controllers. However, I'm going to use it at a lower rating, continuous duty. I selected the DA2034. It will take 3 to 24 volts and step it up to 300 with a switch mode power supply circuit. So this transformer, I ordered some and we're going to hope it'll work for the step-up switcher. And that way we can just use a 12 volt power source to power the whole preamp and not use a large 60 cycle plate transformer which they always have a problem of, of hum in a preamp that's sensitive. It'd be good just to keep 60 cycles completely away from it. So that's the plan here. So we're going to try uh, designing a switcher before the preamp design just to show that I can get 300 volts and enough current for the uh, preamp. For the switch mode power supply, I found this current mode boost controller, 4.5 to 52 volt input. It's called the TPS 4210 by uh, Texas Instruments. Looking online here, pretty reasonable cost. Uh, one is uh, $2.26. So I'm going to try to make that work with the Coilcraft Pulse Transformer and come up with a 12 volt to 300 volt power supply. This chip seems to be quite simple to interface by just looking at the uh, application circuit here. So we're going to give that a shot for the uh, 300 volt step up. I have a preliminary design here of the 12 volt to 300 volt switch mode power supply using the TPS 4210. I haven't calculated all the values here yet. We have the DA2034 Coilcraft transformer here. Switching fed is a 6NQ10 and it's a SOT223 part. Should be enough for the amount of power we're going to need out of this. We have input filtering. This sets the output voltage for 300 volts via this feedback loop here and output filtering and then 300 volts out and we also bring the 12 volts out for the, the 6U10 filaments. So we're going to make a printed circuit board for this and see if we can get it up and running. Going to lay out a printed circuit board for the power supply here and try to place the parts in a nice way to make this thing as small as possible and then we'll go out for printed circuit boards this will be a double-sided board with the transformer and the higher components such as capacitors and so on will be on one side and the other side will be the low profile surface mount parts and we have screw terminals for the 12 volt in and screw terminals for the 300 volt and 12 volt out screw terminals on the actual design here they're on the bottom of the board which will actually be flipped in real life to be on the top and what's shown on the top here in green I always have green top red bottom green top is all the low profile parts the uh, PWM and the surrounding uh, 0805 uh, resistors at least I think they're 0805 
pretty sure I used 0805s here. So I got 12, oh yeah, I have 1206 for the LED because dropping 300 volts down to drive the LED, there's a little bit of a power drop. So I needed 1206s here, but the rest of these are all 805 parts. And there's a few other 1206s up here. And a surface mount fuse. So this is the uh, the board. I'm going to go have boards made now and uh, and then we'll see if we can't get this up and running. Okay, I've got boards in now, and I'm going to start mounting the parts. I'm going to do it kind of in a hurry here. Most of these parts are 0805, and we're going to solder in all of the surface mount parts first which are on the actual top of the board, although it will be flipped later. Then we clean it in rubbing alcohol, isopropyl, 91%. And there's the surface mount side. And now the leaded parts go in last. And they're on the bottom side of the board, which will eventually be the top when the board is mounted. So. Now we're ready to try to test the board out and do some tweaking to get the voltages and and the regulation and everything set and we'll hope for the best. Before I apply power to the board I like to look at it under the stereoscope and check out some of my soldering here just to make sure there's no bridges or anything like that happening. If things look good, we'll be ready to power it up. But a quick scan under the microscope just to check. Soldering isn't too bad of an idea before powering up, especially around the fine pitch IC chip pins. Okay, we're ready to test the board. We have a scope probe on it. Right now on the transformer side of the FAT, We've got a pretty nice pulse at 166 kilohertz. So that part's working. Okay, we got three meters. Top one's input voltage. Middle one is current of 22 milliamps. And uh, the third one is the 300 volt output. And we're going to flip through the voltages here. We started at 5. And we're going all the way up to 15. 16 volts and nothing moved. The current output current stayed the same and the output voltage. This is a little bit of ripple that we have here. Very small. Um, this is what's left of the spikes that are coming out from the switching FET and they're pretty much suppressed also and Again, we're looking at the transformer side of the FET, and the pulses look pretty good. I took some power readings for efficiency of the switching power supply from 6 volts input to 15 volts input. Took the current in and set the output for 6.75 watts or 22.5 milliamps at 300 volts and measured the watts in to the switching power supply at these given input voltages. Turns out the best efficiency, which is a good thing, is at 12 volts. So watts in is 9.24, watts out 6.75. So that gives us an efficiency of 73%, which isn't too bad considering we're stepping 12 volts all the way up to 300. The transformer does have a little bit of a temperature rise to it, so some of the power is going to that. Since the transformer isn't designed for this purpose, it appears 6 watts is about right for the temperature rise that the transformer has. The FET gives off a very little heat at all, so most of the inefficiency, I believe, is in the transformer. Okay, the switching power supply is ready now to place in the RIAA tube preamp chassis. We'll be doing a video next 
on the RIAA tube preamp. 